Gentlemen, welcome back to the Tiege Hanley starting a business building a brand vlog. This one, big number 81. Gentlemen, before we get down to business and talk Tiege, there's a comment that I thought was spectacular from our friend Matt Ford, who I would like to tell, I would actually just like to read the comment. It's not a, it's just a comment. He says, after following Alpha for years, I finally decided to give Tiege a try this past week. If Alka, 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 if Alpha, sorry, Alpha recommended a product, I pretty much trust him and try it out. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Because there are some that think I have, have sold out to the advertising devil. I have not. I only promote great products. And if it's my product, you know it's going to be spectacular. Because it's my name. It's my reputation on the line. Um, it's paid off time and time again. All right. But I was totally unprepared for how amazing Tiege Hanley is. Most people are unprepared. Um, after 48 hours of using it consistently, my skin already is looking and feeling much better. This product is freaking awesome, the real deal. Thank you, Matt. This is what I've been trying to say. This is what I've been screaming from the, from the rooftops. T. Janley is amazing. And seriously, <laughs> um, I cannot stress to you or to people out there that it is the real deal. And I know, and, and that's one of the issues that I think Possibly, I, I, I don't know if it's even an issue or it's not an issue, but I get so like animated and I, and I joke around with and about Tej Hanley so much in these videos that I think that some people probably think that it's a big joke because I joke around about it. And it's a shame because they are actually missing out on having better skin. It's not like it could work. It's like this stuff works. If you're not doing anything for your skin, by using skincare, whether or not that's eye cream, serum, you know, scrubbing, exfoliation, washing, I mean, you know, you know, for those of you who use T. Shanley, that your skin, after you get done exfoliating and washing it, it feels different, it looks different, you glow. It's not like something I'm making up, it's just what happens because you're finally giving your skin nutrients and all the products that it actually needs to do what it does best and, and for you to look amazing. But what I would like to do, Actually, before I get into questions and stuff, give you a little update. There's not much of an update. <laughs> um, everything is, is full steam ahead at Tiege Hanley. Rob has been out of town. He's been actually at a subscription box service or subscription box conference. Um, who knew there was such a thing, right? Well, it's all these companies that have subscription boxes that go and meet up. It was actually started by my friends over at the Gentleman's Box. They actually um, started a conference, kind of like the Menfluential Conference that Antonio and I have started, but for their industry. There really wasn't anything, and so it's a great opportunity for people and companies that are in this space, because there are a ton of them. You know. I was just watching an old episode of Shark Tank the other night, and there was, um, I think it was called Foot Cardigan or something. I, I thought the name was kind of stupid. Um, but it was a, a monthly sock subscription service. There are tons of those, but there are tons of subscription services just in general out there. And the reason why subscription models are so incredibly enticing for entrepreneurs is because as opposed to like selling a book, right? You sell this book, you sell it to one customer. What is the repeat business of that customer. They might come back and buy some other books from you, but you're never going, it, 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 that's probably, this is probably a terrible analogy, but the subscription model, you buy it once, then you get it again, and you get it again, and you get it again. Um, and so it's reoccurring revenue. And so this is something where it's awesome because when you sell it once, then the next month you sell a little bit more, now your revenue is higher and you sell a little bit more and your revenue is even higher and you sell it more, revenue just keeps growing and growing and growing and growing unless you screw the pooch and suck and then everybody cancels. But there's a conference that Rob is at and he's saying that he's having a great time and it's really cool. I, you know, I'm excited for him to go and talk about Tiege because I know that what we've done in the space in terms of the number of, of subscribers that we have and how we've been able to sort of, you know, take it from, from nothing to, you know, very, very, very good numbers fairly fast is something really special. And we have in one year more subscribers than the majority 
of these companies out there that have subscriptions that have been doing it much longer than T. Shanley. And so that's pretty spectacular and that's pretty cool. And so he's there. So I haven't talked to Rob. We didn't have a Tuesday meeting. Kelly's up in Chicago doing things there. Um, we're getting ready to get a big shipment in. We also have a big packaging order that's on its way. And we're starting to, we're still in the process of, of trying to find an agency to sort of help us with our marketing endeavors. We are also on the books is a meeting with a PR agency. Now PR agencies, I'm going to reserve judgment. The idea behind PR agencies, because I actually, my buddy Eric over at Beard Brand, he uses a PR agency. I'm not sure if he still does, but he did. And the idea behind PR agencies, they reach out to, you know, you basically, you hire them. Um, and, and it's on a monthly sort of contract. You're paying them, usually it's thousands of dollars, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 dollars. And they are supposed to get you in agencies or not agencies, but they're supposed to get you exposure, whether or not that's on magazines, television, radio, they are, they're reaching out. Now I get reached out to as an influencer by tons of PR agencies that basically represent like Unilever or, or like Clarisonic, Clarisonic. Um, there's the alpha brush thing, a scrubbing thing where they would reach out and be like, Hey, we've got this great product. If you're trying to do a feature on you know, whatever, would you possibly include this? We'll send you one for free. Now the problem with PR agencies is they think that influencer, this actually still works, right? The reality is that influencers nowadays are bombarded by companies. They're bombarded by products. They're bombarded by PR agencies with, you know, free stuff and, 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 and they're not taking it. They might say, yeah, send it to me, but I'm never going to promote something that a PR agency sell, sends me. But if they could get us on, on a television show or T. Shanley featured on some type of list or whatever, I mean, you never know. And so I interviewed a PR agency a while ago for Alpha M thinking that I needed to build my brand. And so I needed to get on, you know, talk shows and in GQ magazine and this and that. And the woman was like, yeah, it's going to be like $4,000 a month. I'm like, $4,000 a month, what do I get for that? She's like, well, and they, and that's the other thing. They can't actually tell you, you get X, Y, and Z. It's like, we're going to send feelers out, right? And, and for me, in my opinion, paying for some arbitrary, not able to put a dollar amount on things they're going to do, I am not a fan of spending money that way. And... I don't know. We have an agency that is going to pitch us. They're going to tell us what they can do for us. But the other thing is, this is a very different business. Um, I don't think that T. H. Hanley being an Esquire magazine is going to do much because I don't think a lot of people, I think magazines and definitely radio, I just don't think it's, eh. I think it's, eh. I think it's, hey, we're in GQ magazine or whatever. Oh, but the reality, you want to know the other thing? A lot of these companies that win awards, like the GQ grooming awards, the best moisturizer, the best this, usually they're all paid. <laughs> They'll actually reach out to companies to be like, hey, we're doing this. Would you like to be our moisturizer? It'll cost you $10,000. And a lot of people, I don't, I don't know if I should be telling you that, but that's sort of the reality behind things. And so we're talking to a PR agency next week and I have no idea what to expect. I have low expectations, but hey, I don't want to be that ignorant and rude to think that I know it all because I've interviewed one PR agent. Um, and I also know that, that Eric, like I said, my buddy Eric at Beard Brand, he's used them and has really, he liked them. I don't know if he's still using them. I should call him. I'll call him later. What else is going on? Kelly's doing his thing. We're rocking and rolling. We are, business is good. Business actually is kind of like, it, it's, it's still, we're still adding, but it's not growing as fast because we haven't had as many promotions and I haven't done as many promotions as, as I have been doing. I did one that I thought was going to be really good and it was how to remember people. It was a YouTube video, how to remember people's names. I thought it was going to be a rock star. I thought it was going to be a really good video, but it, it was a terrible promotion. It, it converted terribly. It was a bad, it was a poorly viewed video. It was just 
Sometimes you miss. You swing for the fences every time, but sometimes you hit a, you hit a single, or, or that one was kind of like a foul ball. It didn't even get me in, in, in play, but them's the breaks. I, I just filmed another one yesterday that I'm really excited to actually release, and I think it's gonna be great. Lots of comments were about taxes. You guys want me to do a video about taxes, and so I will. I am not an accountant. I am not a tax expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I guess next week I'll do a video talking more about taxes and some of the things that, that I've faced, some of the things, the nuances about owning a small business and taxes and, and um, I don't know, it'll be all about taxes. So guys, if you've got a specific, blah, specific tax business related question down in the comments, ask away. And next week we will do the tax episode. But once again, I'm not an accountant. I just, I just will play one on um, this, this channel. But yes, lots of comments about that, that video and you guys want that. So why not give the men you what you need or what you want? Um, first question that got the most likes is how do you guys test these products on humans or animals? We do not, we have never, we will not ever test our products on animals. We've already discussed this in some of our other vlogs. We test them on, on humans and um, there's all sorts of testing and regulations that go into the process of approval. And so just don't worry, we're not jamming T. Shanley AM moisturizer in bunny's eyes or anything like that. Um, it's on human animals, so we're good there. Uh, let's get to a few more questions. I vote yes on taxes, taxes, taxes. Uh, why do international customers receive a white ugly tige box? We've already covered that. The reason we don't want to raise suspicion or red flags in these other countries so that you, if you get a white box, it's a lot less like, hey, what's this? As opposed to just a black box that says tige and all sexy. They know. And if, if the customs agent is like, yo, this is tige Hanley, we're charging them a thousand bucks because it's so valuable. We just want to avoid that. <laughs> it's for you. Will you ever do a vlog like this for Pete and Pedro? No. Um, is this where Tiege memes started? I don't think so. <laughs> um, another comment is that they're glad to actually see that, that, that this channel has actually real comments. And, and a lot of people are pretty annoyed at my comment section on my videos. They've turned into nothing but like who can make the funniest Tiege Hanley comment or meme or whatever. And, and um, I get it. <laughs> I totally get it. But it'll, don't worry, it'll wear off, I think. I, I thought it would be dead by now. It, it's still going strong. So I'm sorry. But yes, this vlog, one of the reasons why I love it so much is because it is a real conversation. And somebody else commented, I, I don't have it, the comment in front of me, but he also commented, he said, hey, it's really cool that you do this vlog, even though the views aren't super big on these videos. Because literally, these videos are getting like 3,000, 4,000 views. My YouTube videos in like a day are like 200,000. But this, honestly, the Tiege vlog, I find more value in in terms of being able to talk. And, and for me, I am an entrepreneur. I just actually filmed the video. I don't know when it's going to launch for my YouTube channel about six steps. Because one of the things that some people are actually commenting on my YouTube channel is you should do more business related content. And I've sort of held off. I've done a few videos where I've done, you know, like 10 lessons I learned from being an entrepreneur. And I've done a few business related videos, but they don't do super well in terms of views because you've actually got to be interested in business or starting a business or what I have to say about business in order to actually watch it. And so that's not really the, the, the platform, but this is. But that being said, I, the other day I was actually thinking, I'm like, you know, I'm going to do a video talking about how to start a successful online business because I own eight businesses. When I actually sat down, I always say like, I own five. I don't say when I actually sat down and counted, I own eight businesses. Some are good. Some are great. Some are, eh, some are like probably won't be around in another year, but I own eight. I've had more like my, my accessories and stuff like that that I've killed because it was just insane that I was stringing bracelets um, every night. But I've tried a lot of things, everything from a membership website 
to online coaching, to physical products, to apparel, to conferences, to advertising, to an advertising agency. I mean, I've done a lot. And so I do have a unique perspective. And so I actually sat down and wrote out sort of what is the, the key to starting a successful business. And there are six, six steps. But basically, if you follow these steps, you will be successful. I'm not gonna spoil it because you guys will probably be interested, but in the upcoming weeks, uh, possibly month, I'm gonna be, uh, gonna be putting that video out there. And um, speaking of comments that a lot of people leave on my, my video, and I wanted to sort of talk about my wife in terms of why she's never in anything, and why I rarely talk about her. It's on purpose. I know that a lot of YouTubers, and, and this is going to sound crazy, but in a world, in the, in the world in which we live and the platform in which I make a living, YouTube, keeping things private and for yourself <clears throat> is sort of a crazy concept. A lot of these vloggers, a lot of these people put everything out there for the world to see. And when I first started, making YouTube videos, I basically had to make a decision. Do I include my loved ones and my, my friends, my family members in this platform and, and put them out there for the world to see and destroy? And I decided, no. I signed up for the abuse, the, the criticism, and all the, the negativity that comes along with starting a channel. But if you're not, like, if you don't have thick skin, it's brutal. Like it is so like <laughs> like the internet the internet is a is a is a is a nasty place. And I wanted to protect the people that I love. Now, my mom recently has been in one video. I asked her and I was a little bit weird about that. My dad is a big ham. He's been in videos for years. I'm not worried about him. But, you know, my wife, you know, people that my wife specifically, I want to protect her. My wife is a beautiful woman and I've been with her for 14 years and she is, you know, the apple of my eye and, and, you know, I couldn't do any of this without her support and her being, you know, basically my, my rock. But I don't want to subject her to the ridicule and the abuse that comes along because you could, like I said, I've said this a thousand times, you could teach the blind kittens to read and somebody would have a problem and let you know about it. And can you imagine? Women are already like, you know, and, and men too. You know, everybody's got insecurities. And if you put yourself out there like this, it's a whole, do it's a, it's a whole nother level of insecure, insecurity and people pointing out your flaws. Like there are things that I wasn't insecure about that I'm insecure about now after you pointed them out time and time and time and time again. And so I decided that I was going to keep my private life private. And I'm actually really, really happy and proud that I've done that. I feel like more people probably should, but it's not for me to say. All I know is that I made the decision to keep some things private. And um, will that change in the future? I can't say. But I know that I've been doing this now for about 10 years and um, she hasn't been in one single video out of 3,500. And so I also don't post, I don't allow pictures to be taken with, you know, the two of us. Like there are certain, I, I, like I put the kibosh, like we took a helicopter ride and the pilot's like, oh, let me take a picture of you two. I put it on Instagram. And I'm like, no, it's literally, I do not allow her to be put out there because I want to protect her. And that's that. And I think it's getting harder. I think that, you know, it's not easy, but it's what I've chosen to do and, and I stand by my decision. And so thank you. Thank you for understanding. <laughs> and some things you want to keep for yourself. My God. Like, think about this. Certain YouTubers, they've got like them and their girlfriend or their wife together and they're in one channel. You imagine trying to do this when you're fighting or if you get divorced, what happens then? I mean, it, it could get ugly fast. That's the other reason. <laughs> um, the other thing people ask me is, oh, do you and your wife work together? No, we would kill each other. We are very different people. Um, 
but I think that's one of the reasons why it works, honestly. And so, um, yeah, so that's the deal. That's why I, I, I keep my wife out of things and, and that's the honest reason. But um, I appreciate your curiosity. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna wrap it up there. Next week, big, exciting tax topic. <laughs> In the comments, let us know. If you haven't tried T. Shanley, what are you waiting for? We love you, we're waiting for you. We're waiting for that handsome ass face to enhance it even more. Guys, thank you for watching. Like seriously, I love doing these vlogs. <laughs> it, I, they feel different, right? They feel better. It's a conversation. It's not me jumping around acting like an idiot. I still act like an idiot, but it's different. Guys, we love you and think you're super amazing.